That sun is killing me though, I'm not gonna lie. Just so we only have like an hour left. That's, That's a wrap. A wrap. Let's go. That's a wrap. Today we're going over five of the most crucial steps to lighting any location. I got my professional Hollywood DP friend over here, Giselle. Giselle, tell the people a little bit about your experience. Cool. How's it going? My name is Giselle. Um, call me Juice. I'm a DP here based on Los Angeles and I work on commercials, uh, narrative films, uh, fashion films, music videos, all that good stuff. This guy, he's used to high-end sets, but today we're balling on the budget with the student film kit. And we're gonna scout, light, and shoot this short film in five <laughs> hours. And we're gonna really have to depend on your instincts, Giselle. So I hope you're ready. I'm ready, let's do it. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I wanna shoot a breakup scene. The story is the girl finds out that the guy's cheating on him. And mm. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from some rom-coms, but mm. also some kind of dramatic romantic movies. Okay. Those are the kind of vibes that gave me inspiration for this breakup scene. Mm. So I want the scene to look real. All right, so this is the living room we're shooting in. I know you're used to shooting on professional sets, but this is what I got, man. So I'm picturing a breakup scene over here. What are you picturing? What can we do here? Yeah, well, I'm really liking this large window over here. It gives a reason for us to motivate a key source from. I really enjoy the shape of these couches, how it's leading in this way. So what I'm thinking is camera can probably live on this side of the room and this will be our world that we'll live with. I think for the genre, since it is realism, I'm thinking about locations that feel like somewhere we've been before and mm -hmm. oftentimes, with realism, the source is often motivated by something that would be like in real life, like lamps, windows, um, just sources that we can motivate from to, to build the world. Now we've only got our actress for five hours. We've got a black magic pocket 4K. Mm. We have a smallish lighting setup and we have some expendables. That's gotcha. what we're working with today. How far apart do you think we should have our actors? Yeah, I definitely think they should be a few feet apart with the story of them breaking up and they're both kind of on edge. To be able to see that distance between already suggests that they're far removed from each other and will allow us to figure out what's going on as the story progresses. I don't know which side we want Bobby on, right? Uh, but I'm thinking like, she's kind of the main character in the scene. She's finding out that she's being cheated on. The first thing that came to mind is I think Bobby is probably sitting here um, with her backside against this window. Um, and then we can have Rio on the opposite end. We got Rio and Bobby over on the couch. They got the distance between them, kind of like what we were talking about. Right now, you're just kind of leveling off the tripod, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just kind of deciding where I want the height to land for the camera. Now, talking about the composition, what's your process when we're looking for this wide shot? The first thing that I'm thinking about is actually camera level. I found that going for a lower camera angle allowed me to feel a little bit more of this expansive world. As I was floating around, tapping into what felt best is always what I usually do. And so for this one, I was going for a more eye level type look. For over the shoulders, I think they're great when you wanna immerse the viewer into this world and make you feel like you are in their world and you are part of what this experience is. And so once I found that right angle and where like a good eye line for the coverage, I just kind of decided, okay, this is where I want it and we'll just bring in sticks. All right, we got our masters and our close-up figured out. We're talking about lighting. What are you doing right now? Yeah, so I'm on an app called Sunseeker, and um, first thing I usually like to do on location scouts or like prep or anything is um, once I get to location is just to see where the sun's going. Some things like that I like to watch out for is where the sun goes because if I'm shooting into a window where the sun will peak at a certain time, I either have to make sure we plan to shoot ahead of the day uh, or like earlier in the day, or um, just try to find a way to mitigate that sun peaking in my shot. The key light is pretty much your main source of light in your frame. Once you've identified where your main source of light is coming from, you can decide whether you want your look to be more of a high key look, which is um, fairly bright exposure, both on the subject on the front side or on the background. Um, on the flip side, if it's like more of a low key look, sometimes you get your key source from something from behind the subject and the front side's a little darker in exposure. So, gotcha. Um, well, yeah. sorry, you're talking about this window. What should yeah. we do with this? Yeah, so for this window, I think because it's so large and our lighting package isn't that big, uh, I'm gonna just start with closing up these curtains just a little bit so I can mitigate some of the spill that's happening um, from the natural sunlight without any lights outside. Okay. So yeah, so we can close these up a little bit. From there, um, the next thing I'd like to do is just start to black out the ceilings with some Visqueen or if you have like trash bags or something. With the shears breaking the window and even with the curtains closing in on the gap of how much light is coming in in terms of this spread, there's still gonna be a lot of light bouncing around the room. And a technique I like to use for rooms with lighter colored walls or even like white ceilings 
is to take some duvetine, and if you don't have duvetine, like black trash bags will do. And I like to take those trash bags and essentially black out certain parts of the room to control how much light is bouncing around for the ambient. Once I have my key set up, things I'm paying attention to are definitely the ratios between the key to fill and the key to background. One stop of light means it's two times brighter. So if I have a two stop difference, that technically means that I have a four to one ratio. The higher the ratio is, the more contrast you're going to see because one side will be darker than the other. But I always use a light meter tool or even like false color as a tool to really make sure that I'm nailing it in right. I definitely always love to use light meter because it's very accurate. The first thing I wanna do is actually place the ND on our lens and take down the stops of the key outside because the sunlight coming in is gonna be really hot. And then from there, on the inside to lift the fill exposure, I'm gonna use the Amaran F22C. And because we're already breaking it with a sheet of diffusion, I'm gonna add an extra LCD grid just to kind of control where that light is spreading and to soften it up just a little more so that we can emulate light that would be bouncing around from that window source we're gonna break it through a tablecloth. In addition to contrast ratios, I think for the overall image, I'm looking for the disbursement of highlights and shadows to help create that extra layer of depth. And so with tools like false color and tools like zone systems, you can kind of dial in and be aware of your image and using tools like false color to monitor exposure is very important because it's the idea of labeling out the zones in your image and finding the groupings of the different exposure levels based off of the 18% middle gray. When painting your image with highlights and shadows, the main key takeaway is we're just trying to enhance the 2D image to look more three-dimensional. And so really being intentional about where your highlights and shadows are, not only helps for the story element of it, but also just the actual reproduction of a 3D image. I'm just wondering, how do we take it one more step further? Do we add a little pop of color into the background? I mean, how do we add a little bit more visual interest? For sure. Right now, I'm using an ectochrome based like film emulation LUT, which is providing a certain extra characteristic as if I'm shooting on film stock. And accompanied with that, I've brought down the white balance in camera to around 3800. And what that's doing to my overall image is it's giving a slightly cooler, bluer hue. Introducing a tungsten source would be really great to create that pop of color, essentially color contrast. Rio's still blending a little bit into the background. How can we cut them out a little bit just to make a really pop in frame? Yeah, so the COB60X is paired with the reflector right now, and that has a very wide spread of light. I only wanted to just hit Rio, so I'm just taking some cinefoil, creating a little snoot just to control the spill and also dial in where the light's hitting. All right, well, Giselle, we only have like an hour left, so I hope this doesn't take too much more time to set up. How do you add an eye light? I mean, we're already getting an eye light from the big window source, especially when you look at Rio's coverage. A really quick thing to do is taking a bounce board of sorts, and you can play around with the sizes to get the exact look you're trying to go for, and to bring that into frame, that way we can get that refraction in the eye. Or you can just take another light source, for example, the Amaran F22C, just bring it in a little closer so you get that speck of light without really affecting the exposure value. We started shooting and you whipped out this can of spray. What is that? Yeah, it's essentially haze in a can. So the black chromis filter in combination with the glimmer glass is already giving us that atmosphere, like slight hylation. Adding more haze into the scene will assist with the volumetric lighting, helping lights spread around, especially the sunlight that's coming from the window. It's that little oomph that's needed to just kind of breathe a little bit more life into the scene. Thomas, there's nothing. Why can't I see it? Can we, like, talk? That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Yeah. That's a wrap. 
I think for the master, the key that's coming from the window source is definitely blown out and it's providing a really nice far side key on Rio, which I really like, and on Bobby, kind of giving a little more of a silhouetted feel on the front side. And in terms of the blocking, I mean, I absolutely love how you placed our actors and I think that distance really adds that tension, mm -hmm. especially when she grabs that phone and then chucks it back at him. For sure, <laughs> I felt that. We're looking at this close up on Bobby. What changes did we make to make this thing look consistent with the master? I think the main thing was I had to stop down with the ND because the sun, when I moved closer, is gonna be a higher exposure value. So that was the first thing I had to knock it down a few points. To top it all off is I added a four x four bounce board on the far side of Bobby and just push it in to bring the levels up on her face because it was a little bit underexposed and then also laid down a tablecloth underneath to kind of upfill and also add that highlight. Now looking at Rio's close up, I love that little Rembrandt lighting that we're getting on his right eye. And overall, I think the gradient of the highlights to the shadows is pretty beautiful in this shot. All right, great job, bro. That Me turned too. out so amazing. I'm so happy with the final image. How do you feel about it? I feel great. It's not about the tools, it's about how you use them. And as long as you practice and apply, you can walk into any room pretty confident to do your job. So yeah, practice, practice, practice. I learned so much and I hope you guys did too. If you have any questions for me or Giselle, let us know down in the comments. And if you wanna see us do another video together, let us know what you wanna see, all right? Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time.